Welcome back to this video series on data and data modeling. In this video, I like to talk about some of the different keys you will see uh, illustrated within the ERD diagram. So you'll see keys such as the primary key, foreign key, you'll see a composite key, uh, and there's a whole host of keys. Uh, they have different meanings and they represent different things. And we only take a look at a few of them. So let's skip ahead here. So revisiting our sub schema for MPLS renters, we have the three different entities. Um, and specifically what I want to look at is uh, what is PK, FK, and then you'll see that with our associative entity, we have PK, FK1, PK, FK2, which is what we would consider a composite key. Um, it basically has two or more columns that uniquely identify this row. And in this case here, it only has uh, two attributes. Uh, that would consist of the row, but um, those two attributes also make up the key for uh, this table. And then here with property, uh, each we have one key for property and then one primary key for amenity. Uh, and again, the primary key uh, represents or uniquely identifies the row. Now there's a, some other keys that I'm, I'm not discussing within this video. Uh, that more specifically uh, uniquely identify a column, but not necessarily a row. Um, but the ones that I want to concern ourselves with is the ones that are listed here. Primary key, foreign key, uh, composite, and then alternative key. What I want to quickly do is look at another diagram. And so we're going to step away from the MPLS renders for a quick moment. And I want to look at, let's see here, this relationship between an employee and dependent. So I want to step back. Um, we'll talk about the keys in just a second, but let's step back and actually write the relationship between an employee and a dependent. Talk a little bit about the strength and then discuss uh, the type of keys we see within um, this diagram. All right, so let's go ahead and write the relationship. So I'm going to step down here. And what we'll say is that an employee can add, the add is our verb, add zero or more dependents and then here we'll say the bidirectional will be each dependent can add can be added by one and only one employee, right? So that's our relationship that we have here. We have the cardinality, which is uh, an employee can add zero or more. And then the bidirectional is that a defendant can be added by one and only one employee. Now, the relationship here between an employee and dependent is strong. And so that's indicated by the solid line between employee and dependent. And the reason why uh, the relationship is strong is because if we were to delete employee, we're going to delete all of the corresponding dependents. So you don't want to leave, as I say, for instance, uh, you have an employee and the employee has a spouse and two kids. If that employee leaves the company, we would also want to delete uh, that employee spouse, as well as the two kids from the database as well. Um, so dependent is what we consider a weak entity. Uh, it's existence dependent upon the employee. So if we get rid of an employee record, we want to get rid of all the corresponding uh, dependent records that are associated with the employee. And that brings us to the key. We have a composite key that makes up and which uniquely identifies each row. And so we have the employee ID and the, uh, the dependent's name, which is a composite primary key uh, that will uniquely identify the dependent. Um, and like I said, with relationship strength, and we notate that with a solid line, whenever we delete an employee, we want to uh, retroactively go back through our database and delete all of the folks who are associated with that employee. 
So um, again, just to reemphasize, uh, employee is a strong entity, dependent is a weak entity, and we can usually identify that sometimes through the composite key, but the relationship is strong uh, in the sense that if we we notate that with a dot, I mean with a solid line, and if we were to delete an employee, we would delete all the corresponding dependents. Now, the last thing I want to focus on here is that primary key uniquely identifies a row uh, for the employees. So we can have hundreds of employees, but we can identify the first name, last name, social security number, email address, status, sex, supervisor, all by the employee ID. We can do a search and look up a unique instance of an employee by the employee ID number. Now, we also have an alter alternative primary key or our alternative key. And so if we look back at our slides here, an alternative key, I need to correct this here, it says is, but it should be is a column or a group of columns in a table that uniquely identify every row. So this alternative key does not serve as the primary key, but if we needed it to, we could. So we could swap out employee ID for employee social security number because it's a unique number that will uniquely identify the employee. But most companies are moving away from using a social security number to uniquely identify an employee and instead are creating these unique IDs for each employee. But employee social security number would be an example of an alternative key that can be used in place of the primary key. Um, let's see here. So we have primary key and then we have foreign key. So foreign key, remember, I'm going to say this a few times, the many side receives the foreign key. In a one to many relationship, the many side receives the foreign key. In a one to many relationship, in this case, an employee that can have many dependents, the many side receives the foreign key. In this case here, um, Actually, this is shouldn't be PKF2 because there's no PKF2. It should just be PK. There we go. So that's more. That's correct. Uh, so we only have one foreign key from the employee, um, and so on the mini side receives the foreign key. All right. So hopefully we have a good understanding of how we would identify the relationship between the employee dependent, which we wrote down here, and then also. Um, the entity strength, employee is strong, dependent is weak, um, but then the relationship is strong. Now, what would indicate a weak relationship if this is a dotted line? And that would, in this case, if it was a weak relationship, dependent would be strong and employee would be strong as well. Uh, and then dependent will be considered, um, uh, it's not dependent upon another entity. So it's, it's not an identifying relationship. In this case here, as it currently stands, um, dependent is and uh, is dependent upon employee, uh, and so it's an identifying relationship in that employee identifies the various dependents. Hopefully this makes sense, um, and we'll further explore some more concepts related to ER diagrams in the next video. Stay tuned.